All right, it's been a while since we've seen you in person. When was the last time uh, we were talking in person? Playoffs, maybe? Long time. Wow. Well, it's good to be back. Uh, good to see you all here on the field. It'll be great to see fans in the stands. It'll bring a lot of energy to practice. Uh, again, first time in a long time to have uh, normalcy come back to practice. So really excited about that. And obviously what it means then moving towards games as well. Um, you know, you felt the energy in the building this morning, going through walkthrough, going through the meetings, just seeing uh, our team together again, getting caught up on how our summers were. And again, it has a different feel than last year because we had OTAs. And so we had meetings and practices and built a foundation already through the spring, which I think is um, a big improvement from last season where, you know, when we showed up at this time, we were uh, meeting guys for the first time in months and, and rookies like Justin Jefferson you know, hadn't been able to practice yet. And um, and we were still learning, and we were only doing walkthroughs for a while, too. So it took a while to even get going full speed. So great to be back to a more normal rhythm. And, um, you know, we have a good foundation built from the OTA time, and and now it's about uh, having a tremendous training camp and finding the, uh, you know, the 53 guys in the practice squad and, and um, you know, building the, the group from here. So uh, with that, I'll take any, any questions you have. Um, you know, I, I think uh, there, there's a lot more to accomplish. You know, there's a lot of work ahead, and um, I found watching tape just made me hungry to get back to work and improve. And um, you know, I I, I thought I, I gained some knowledge of sort of what's gotten me to where I am, uh, what's gotten me to this point, and then um, you know where where I still want to go. Well, I think. You know, I've answered this question before in other ways, but uh, Justin, you know, if he were to have the exact same season he had last year and did it like 12 or 13 times, he's probably, you know, going to Canton, I would guess. So so I'm, I'm not saying that to put pressure on him. I'm just saying when you talk about what's the next step, it's not changing who he is. It's doing it again and then doing it again and then doing it again. And I think it's more about consistency than it is about changing. So the challenge in football, and I've seen it happen in my journey watching guys going back to Michigan State, is don't just be a one-year wonder. Don't just be a flash for a couple years. Don't just be you know, someone who has a good run. Be someone who can sustain it, and, and I think that'll be the challenge. But it's really not changing anything. It's just do it again. Do it again and do it again and do it again and be consistent. And um, you know, I've learned how difficult that is you know, in my career watching and observing just how few guys are able to do that over double digit years. But uh, that's what I've challenged him to do. That's what he'll be challenging himself to do. But I think the key is also don't try to change anything or reinvent yourself. You're a great player and just keep doing it. Thrilled. Um, you know, it adds to the energy of practice, having fans here. Uh, we just broke our quarterback meeting, and, you know, we talked about how people are giving up vacation time to come watch us practice. I mean, that sums it up right there, you know. And, and uh, it, honestly, it makes coming out to practice on a 95-degree day feel like a privilege when you realize that that's what fans are doing. So, um, and, and just all the more so with game day. I mean, to be able to go out to that first preseason game and, uh you know, see more than a than a handful of people in the stands. It makes a major difference, and uh, if anything, we got to get acclimated to that, right? Because the most we saw last year was maybe fifteen thousand, if I remember right. So, um, could take some acclimation getting back used to the crowd noise and the energy, and you know, you got to make sure that you, uh, you know, can roll with that too, because that that's going to definitely get the juices flowing. I think because Phil's been around the block and is, is doing such a great job, it, it isn't a major transition. Um, you know, can't say enough good things about Phil and his experience. And, you know, he coached with Bill Callahan in Washington, who I was able to work with in Washington. And so um, there's some similarities there. And then, um, you know,
know, he goes way back even with this scheme back to Denver. Um, you know, he's played this, the position of center, so he really knows his stuff and uh, has great command of, of our offense. So I, I think it's been a really smooth transition, and it'll be great to still have Rick in his role from a distance, being able to speak into the run game plans and the pass protections and just the strategy week in and week out. Um, yeah, I think it's a, uh, it's a, it's part of what training camp is all about is getting guys in here, getting the work done, um, you know, giving them reps, giving them experience, you know, during OTAs, it was not full speed. It was full speed in the outside, but in the interior, it was, you know, being smart and, uh, being measured. And so now it'll be not full pads today, but we'll be getting there, but we got helmets on. We'll be going close to full speed and, and we'll practice smart. But I think that higher intensity also allows for guys to really show what they can do and, and get pushed and, uh, and be evaluated. So that's where training camp kind of ups it a notch from, from the spring. It's also a great hat. I love that hat, by the way. Yeah, the NFL and the NFLPA are going to do everything they can to make sure that, you know, every single game gets played at when it should be played. You know, now that we have fans in the stands, for games to get played, it's a lot more difficult to move the game, right? I mean, when it was an empty stadium, it was a little different conversation to move it to a Tuesday or a Wednesday or play the game in the afternoon or, and, you know, be able to move it. So, um you know, now that there's going to be fans in the stands and returning to normal, it's it's not quite as easy. So um, they're going to have these protocols in place, and we're going to follow them and be diligent. They'll be diligent, and um, you know, do our best to make sure that we're, that uh, you know we're able to play all these games as they should be played. Yeah, yeah. I I don't even think it's a big deal. I think uh, we just go to work and. We have so much to that that really commands our attention. You know, when I go out to practice, I'm thinking about, you know, protections and coverages and blitzes and so many other responsibilities that it just kind of the protocols have to become second nature where you can really focus on football instead because the time spent, energy spent on the other stuff, you know, really is not the best way to spend your time and energy. So we got to get to a place where that stuff is you know, second nature, and we've got good people helping us, and then we can focus on football as much as possible. Well, I think our expectations are, are pretty consistent year in and year out. I think we, we uh, you know, want to be a very explosive offense. We want to be highly ranked amongst the league because you kind of compare yourself to, to the rest of the league by the end of the year as to where you stacked up. and. You know, we never want to enter a season and then finish the year as, and expect to finish the year in the bottom half of the league in, in certain categories. So um, our expectations are always high, um, you know, and there's always going to be new pieces to fill in. You know, when you lose a Riley Reef, you, you feel like you got to hit that, you know, reset button there. But when you lose a Stefan Diggs, you feel like you got to hit that reset button. And so every year you have those pieces you have to replace. And, uh, um, you know, this year is no different. Yeah, um, you know, going into year 10 now, I've kind of got my rhythm of the balance of stress I want to put on myself and then the rest I want to do. Um, so for me, you know, it is a lot of, I call it just body work, you know, training with, with a trainer who takes me through a lot of corrective exercises. If we notice any limitations in whether it be my shoulder motion to my, uh, you know, aches or pains I may have to my posture, you know, just trying to make sure that as I, uh, take more hits and play longer that my body is feeling every bit as good as it did when I entered the NFL and and then I just try to make sure that I'm coming back in great physical shape you know that that nothing out here in 95 degree heat is going to slow me down